This video is brought to you by Blue Guardian, the fastest growing prop firm in 2023. All right, folks, welcome to the week 12 update of the Blue Guardian Challenge. We've got six traders taking on the challenge, including myself. You're going to get an in-depth look of how everyone's trading week went. We've got one trader who made money this week. You're going to find out who that is in a second, and you're going to find out exactly how my trading week went. Remember, you can see these guys live on the channel. They're live streams. Hit subscribe, like below, and make sure you check them out as they hit. And also, you're going to get 10% off with the coupon code TRADINGNA on your next Blue Guardian challenge. All right, folks, let's hear from these guys and then get on with the show. Our sponsor Blue Guardian is the only prop firm that gives their traders a tool to protect them from hitting their max daily loss and over trading. It's super simple to use. Just set the Guardian protector each day from your dashboard. Did you also know that they've just released an unlimited time evaluation with a zero trading days requirement, giving you plenty of time to hit their low 8 and 4% targets, making it super fast to get funded. Plus, it's cheaper than the 40 day time limit evaluation. Check out the link and coupon in the description to get 10% off your next Blue Guardian evaluation. All right, folks, here's my update for the week. Now, what I thought was going to be a fantastic week, I would had back-tested a new strategy. I mentioned it last week. I was going to try and trade a new strategy. I did. Uh, it was going for a higher R, and I thought I was being very clever with everything I was doing. Unfortunately, there was a few things I'd missed out on in terms of the back-testing that I didn't realize was going to be a problem going forward. Um, I'll talk about those as we we move through this. So start off with how do we get on now? I've gone to a Swift Journal just to show you because it's a little bit easy to go through the trade. So this was Monday. I did have a win to start off with, which was great. You know, great start to the week. I probably should have ended it there. Uh, then I had another smaller win. Now cut that short. Should I have cut it short? No, in hindsight. Uh, that was so I was up for the day, which was good. Next day, I had a trade that, that had been running overnight, and for a, so it had been running for like over a day, and I think it had been up at 1R, if not higher. Uh, it did come back, and I was like, this is not looking flash now. It's probably going to hit the stop. I got out of it. It actually went on, I think this one went on to be a profitable trade and would have given me my 2R again. So mistake there. Now, the third mistake, well, I don't know if it was a mistake. So these were all trades that I did hold to plan. But on the third day, everything just went south. I had news hit, and all of my orders got triggered. Uh, the, the the way that the strategy was structured, there were multiple orders, so it was it was just out of control. Now, what happened was the Guardian Protector did kick in and stop me out of everything at 1.5%. Now, was I aware that that was going to happen? No, I wasn't. I'd set that up when I had a bot running on the account, so I was like... What's going on here? Why have all my trades closed? Oh, I've got a notification from Guardian. Blue Guardian, the Guardian protectors kicked in. I forgot that I had it running. Now, I thought at the time, I was like, oh, this has kind of destroyed my strategy. In hindsight, I looked at what it protected me from, and it was probably like another four losses. So it did really help in this respect in this respect uh, so yeah it wasn't a great day now it did make me sort of reevaluate the whole thing and i decided that this probably strategy needs a little bit more thought there was a few things in here like um, for example when the day rolled over what was i going to do with all the open trades that were there and then also um the trading the target for the take profit which was kind of set at 2r was dynamic so it kept moving which meant my risk to rewards just got thrown out so I really needed to find a way to do that that was more mechanical and I couldn't at the time I just had to give up on the strategy for the week which was a shame um, because when I did look at it and played it out across the uh, after the week it ended and gone right what if I'd taken every setup regardless of anything and just you know traded the strategy as it was and it would have worked out it being a 14R strategy um, for the week so I can kind of you know showed the whole emotional thing there where I screwed it up now um, so that was Thursday uh, Wednesday Thursday I did take a, a couple of trades that were uh, one was that th these were based on other strategies that I do trade now and again and I thought look this set the setups here let's take it first one lost second one uh, I did get out early because it was also actually went on to lose as well because it just wasn't shaping up so not a great um, great way to, to, to follow up with the losing strategy. Then we had Friday and I had a trade there, which actually went 1R. So I should have probably closed it at 1R. I was looking for it to go further. <coughs> Ironically, it ran into my other strategy that I'd stopped trading. And that's why I moved my stop loss to break even and it got me out of break even. So yeah, 
it, it it just wasn't a great week overall. I'm looking to improve things this week. What I'm going to do is trade some of these other strategies on my personal account and just leave the Blue Guardian to something that's probably a bit more robust uh, going forward. So how did that look in the terminal? We're currently down 4.891. Uh, now, I'm not too uh, worried about that. We've only been risking 0.2 per trade. Now, that was the win at the start of the week, and then we had that big, massive, just disaster zone here. So, yeah, things are going to hopefully turn around this week, and we can get ourselves back to somewhere close to break even, if not just around around here, at least that equity high again. Right, so that's where we're at. Now, I did want to quickly walk you through, well, first of all, I'll go through a trade. So this was the NJ session here. So this was the first trade that I did win. Now, this is when the news kicked in, and it's bang, bang. And you can see here that I've got these two trades straight after each other, both going short, and I lost them both. Now, why did this happen? I'll show you uh, here how the strategy trades. So this is how it trades. Okay, so what we're going to do is put put on our profit target here. So say this was our profit target, uh, and our entry was let's just say it was was here. We're looking for a two R profit, so our stop loss would be somewhere up here, right? So that's about one R. Okay, so that's our stop loss on the trade. So we're looking at that two R trade there. And let's make a note of that, 2R. So we're gonna make 2R if we win the trade and we're obviously gonna lose 1R if we don't. Now, what I was doing was using half risk here. So um, so half my normal risk. So instead of risking one, like what I would call 1R on the trade, it was actually half an R. Now, this is where I thought I was being clever and I kind of like now wondering if it does actually, is actually clever. So what I noticed was with the strategy, we kind of, found well I kind of found that the sometimes it just got stopped out right and it was so annoying it would just get stopped out and go on to be a great trade so I thought well why don't I have an entry just before the stop out level and then take a second position uh, sorry have my stop loss for that at essentially the 1R level so this is another 1R so I hope everyone is following me here. So let's just note that down as 1R. So that would be my second 1R, but at 0.5 risk. So that's taking really that 1R there is one risk for the whole account, but split up, if that makes sense. So we're what the idea is we enter the trade here, then we enter just before the stop loss we might even get lucky and get not get stopped out just because there's a little gap that I'd leave. And then it either goes on to be a 2R winner and a 3R winner, which gives us an overall, is that 2.5R 2 .5, 2 um, win? Is that overall 2.5 on the one, one times risk? Now, if you were to get stopped out uh, on the on just the first position, uh, sorry, if you got stopped out in the whole lot, then uh, yeah, obviously you're gonna lose one risk or one one hour of the account. Uh, but if you win that first trade, which happened more often than not, you would then basically cover that risk. So it becomes a one hour strategy with a chance to make uh, make more than one hour and give yourself like, if you get a lot of these two hours, you're gonna cover up the one hour pretty quickly. So that was the theory anyway. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments as to whether or not you think this is valid, a valid approach at all, especially if you know you can usually get most of your trades to enter here. And if they fail here, they'll you know go on to win anyway. So kind of aggressive. I just I've actually when I did the um the test run and found that I'd made that 14R for the week, it wasn't based on this approach at all. So it was that uh, it was based on just entering the trade with that two hour target. Okay, so that's where we're at. Uh, next week, hoping for a better result. Let's see how we get on, but let's get on with the next trader. What's up, guys? Lord Banks here with a recap of last week's trading week. It was a short week. We only actually traded one day. So last week, we traded on Tuesday gold. We hit TP1, closed partials 80%, runner to break even. We didn't trade on Wednesday. I mean, it was just ranging. 
We didn't have a trade day on Wednesday. GJ, I didn't like the way it looked on Wednesday. I was actually expecting it to turn around here, but it just continued to, to push up. We missed our breakout here because of the fact that it didn't have wick to the bottom. So when it pushed up like that and broke out, I, I decided not to enter and continue to push up, as you can see. And we didn't have a chance for it to come back, create a a retest for me to enter and we missed it on Wednesday. Thursday, I actually missed a trade, but on Friday, I actually set up these two Euro USD trades. There was one entry here and then one entry here. Both of them actually hit stop loss. These were swing trades. I didn't get to send these out, but this is what basically brought my account down to minus 6.4. We were down like 4.8. I brought it back down to like four. And then with those two, I think it was like 4.3. And then with the, the two Euro USD trades, we're down to 6. 6.4. This wasn't supposed to be taken on this account. I accidentally added those trades onto this account on this MetaTrader. It was supposed to be on a different account. It is what it is. You know, at the end of the day, risk management is what saves us. Right now we're down 6.4%. We're still in this game. You know, we'll be back next week. We start our live sessions on Tuesday and we'll be live Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. See if we can crawl back out of this hole and hopefully uh, get back into the positive. So if you haven't caught us on, on the live yet, make sure you tune in Tuesday London session. We'll be live at 1 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll be trading next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Much love, much love. I'll see you guys there. Peace. Hi, everyone. Jane Slay here. This is the end of August weekly recap, and this week has been a decent week. It's been a, a good week. So let's get straight into the challenge. We ended this week off at 2.853%. So we've just been incrementally climbing since you saw me last, that was at 1%. And then we had a little bit of a trade and carry on going, carry on going, carry on going. And now we're here at in profits. All right. So the, the profit right now is at 853,000. So that's a good 2.853. And we're just making our way steadily, incrementally, just growing the account. And we'll get there eventually eventually. Let's get into some of the trades. Okay, starting the week off, I did a last recording last time and I was actually in this trade as it was going down. And what actually happened was the market, it decided to make a little shift to current going up. And that's just because the Hong Kong gap over here, that was kind of like rated through and then it came up. So I just decided to cut the trade right there. Then we had a move later on um, in the afternoon during London. We had our session set. We had a Hong Kong gap on the sell side. Very, very clear. And took there's this tiny little fair value gap in there in price. And we rode that down um, straight to the Hong Kong gap. And then next day, last morning trade right over here, there was news that came out. We had a little bit of a fair value gap in here. Took a trade. I was expecting it to go down here. But again, we had a, a shift in structure. And as soon as that happened, I cut the trade and I waited for another entry. And that came just before midnight where I actually entered in this consolidation right there because I expected price needed to fill the massive Hong Kong gap on the sell side, which of course it did to perfection both sides and then continued going down. And then we had Tuesday, I actually didn't participate in the AM just because we had this massive run up and I expected consolidation, a nice little choppy chop, which happened. And then we had the liquidity that was set we had the Hong Kong gap on the buy side. And if you can see right here, that Asia liquidity right there, that was my profit. And so what all we did was we waited for a shift, which happened right here. There was like a one, two, three, four, five. So There's quite a few candles Then it snapped back down. And then I entered and we continued going long. Wednesday, Wednesday was good. We had Asia liquidity set, Hong Kong gap was set to sell side. That was my target, but I went to here instead, right there, to perfection. And yeah, what we saw was we saw a market structure shift right there, drop down. On the broker, there was a tiny little fair value gap between this candle and the next one there. It didn't present on the TDV charts, but it did present on the 8 cap broker. So as it came up here, I entered in the candle, it came down. And as it was coming down, I entered and it got me in at this price. So that was okay. Not a problem because we still made some money on the day. So with that, it's been an interesting week. It's been an interesting week because again, I could have held this trade yesterday throughout all of this down move that happened. That would have netted me with what if I took it off at like the London, let's say New York, New York at like nine. If I took it off there, that would have netted me what a 34R but we have our rules. We have the way that we trade. This is the way that I trade. Obviously, I'm not taking humongous risk. As you can see with the Blue Guardian right over here, I am 
it's just really, really small lot sizes as I'm continuing to keep grinding up, up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. Obviously, if I use larger lot sizes, it would be better. But because, again, I have my, my baby, it is very challenging right now to find the perfect time to trade. So I'm always, like, continuing on my phone checking, and it's like, I, I don't exactly know. I'm not on my desk on the chart the whole time. So I'm, I'm taking the trades as I would normally take them, but on my phone. So it's, I'm not as precise. <laughs> but that's my week done. It's been a good 1.83% gain for the week. So again, hopefully we continue on going up in the next week. And I'll see you all next week. Safe trading, everyone. Bye. All right, folks, I'm here at Black Bull Markets headquarters in Auckland, New Zealand. You can see this amazing view behind me of Auckland Harbour. Now, talking about views, if you do want to get free TradingView Pro, then you, all you need to do is trade one lot a month at Black Bull Markets, and they're going to give you free TradingView Pro. So, folks, to find out more, click the link in the description below or the card above. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're taking care of yourself. It's F-bomb with an update on my account. Obviously, it doesn't look too good. I'm not gonna BS you with uh, any stupid excuses, but the reason being is because it was purely my fault. It was user issue. I was simply forcing trades that weren't there and not avoiding stupid trades during market conditions that were unfavorable. And if you join us in live streams, you'll see that we use different ways to in, you know, understand whether or not the, fa the conditions are favorable. Generally, we use the stock market screener and and we look at the other correlating pairs to see what's going on in the other markets, which tend to move opposite to the pair that we trade on and see if they're going in the same way and if they're, if they're in agreement. I did not check those and I would simply rely on the technical strategy. And while you can get away with doing that, you tend to have periods of bad variance with any strategy. And during those periods of bad variance, if you sort of spiral down into it and let it get to you, you have results like this. Like I say, it is a purely user error. I didn't look at the, or at least I did, but I didn't let it affect my stupid trades. I should have avoided them. That was my fault. But anyways, let's get into Friday's session where I tried to mitigate that. I only took two trades. We knew that the market conditions were unfavorable. There was news every 15 minutes. But let's get to the trades. Okay, so we took a trade on, I'll start off with a bad one. While it was a good trade and it would have worked out, I um, got out early just to be cautious. So what do we have? We have a bear candle, that's step one. We have a candle chain. So we have the bear candle that comes after a bull candle, that's step two. And then we have no close above. So, you know, that's a valid bear candle that we look at. And then number three is we need an attempt at a rebalance. So this is the attempt. So the attempt is this bull candle that prints, but doesn't quite make it up above the body low of the bear candle. And since it didn't make it above, we use that as a sign that the market wants to continue in the downward direction. And to confirm that and to give us an entry, that step four is we need a body break entry. So we have this bull candle and the low of the body of this bull candle is what we use to break for an entry. And we usually take about five pips. Now, while it did get to five pips, it got to five pips. I didn't, I wasn't actually looking at it when it got to it and it had reversed by then. And then I sort of, I said that if it would come to break even, I'll get out. And it came to break even, I got out, followed my word. And that was that. I just got out of break even and ended the session there. That was the second trade of the session. The first one was a lot better, which I'll show you now. That was this one. So what do we have? We have a bear candle. We have a candle change. So we have the body high of the bear candle that's been taken. And then we have a, now this was a bear candle and this would have been a valid entry. It had the break of the, the body high. But the only issue is that at the time when I was on the Discord live with everybody else, they were saying that on their broker, it was a bull candle or it was a doji. And so because of the indecision, I didn't, I didn't take it just to be a bit more more cautious. But then we had a definitive bear candle, which was a bear candle on pretty much every broker out there. It was a sizable bear candle. It failed to make it below this line, the, below the body high of the bear. And then we broke above and we had a very easy five pip trade right there. And I could have easily held it for more. I really should have, but I didn't just to be cautious. It was the first trade of the day and I just wanted to build a little bit of a buffer. Anyways, like I say, I will be reducing my risk massively so I can continue trading on the account. It's not looking the best, but like I say, it was due to a user issue. I'll do my best to mitigate those from now on. I've definitely learned my lesson and hopefully I will act on it from the Mondays and Friday sessions that we will usually do. Anyways, that's it for me. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Good day, folks. This is Zach doing my weekly review for the Blue Guardian Challenge. I have another week of loss this week. Risk is going to get cut again. You can see it's nice and flattening out because I keep cutting my risk and protecting my account here. I do not want to flounder and just drown. I want to balance myself out and build back up. 
I don't want to say I'm not, well, I'm not happy, but I'm also not bummed because I think I need this kind of uh, wake up call for, for my trading. So a couple things I have in plan for this next week of trading. I got back to getting, doing forward testing. So like, or I guess it's still back testing because I'll go back and retest each of the sessions that I trade to see what the setup would reveal. And I haven't looked at it in a while, but I picked it up this week because I haven't been traveling and looking at my two main pairs, which are these two on the left here, this session section. I have the times and the risk reward that would be would be coming in. And what I'm noticing is this time that I'm sitting most of the time right here is not doing very good with this strategy. But in the times overnight in between sessions in the evening for my time zone is where the meat of the moves are coming from where the where the return is coming from. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to adjust a little bit to make up for that because I don't want to be just trading these ones that would be a total of one R over the course of 123 trades or something like that. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. So what I'm, my thought is, is that if you were watching live stream earlier, I am keeping my eye on the index. You can see I traded it a little bit yesterday. I was going to go over that in a second, but that I think that session is going to be a lot more that make, make a lot more sense for me to trade in the morning during the New York session. I'm going to be doing that. You can see I tried several times on one minute setups here and my stop was just too small on pretty much. Well, other than this one, I, I probably could have taken profit down here, but I was expecting a, a bigger bearish day. So um, it didn't. But up here, let me get back into the one minute. This first one here entry was after a rate of this level here, as well as I had, I had just deleted it, but I had a bigger picture line as well that was up here that got rated. So the entry was in the in this fair value gap right here after it dropped below. So it's, this is kind of the standard setup for me and it just needed one more move. So that one stopped out. Tried it again, same idea after putting in a displacing move lower with a fair value gap and even a body gap on this chart. Look, it just stopped me out to the pip essentially or the point i guess in this in this class and then moved down lower so i'm getting close i just need to learn to be less aggressive with my stops last entry was on two minute setup and it's the same same kind of idea on this this bigger move from down here all the way up entering a gap was able to ride it down a little ways but like i said i was looking for a bigger picture move down below or down at least to this level here and um, it didn't. Um, so it went up and rated yesterday's high and now it's moving lower. But um, I think for today, I'm, I'm going to be all, all done for trading this account. So that's where I'm at. New plans for this next week. Reduce risk. Don't trade the Forex pairs in the New York session. Stick with focus. Focus my training and trading on the index. So that's where I'm at. I am still devoted and committed to getting this account into the positive and passing the challenge. So thanks, Cam. Thanks, Blue Guardian. Hello, hello guys. As a recap for this week, we had a lot of trades. Unfortunately, we are still struggling to get back up to the initial balance. We are currently down 2.3%. Let me go ahead and share my screen so you can see. So as you can see here, this week was pretty hectic. I mostly try to scalp the market, not like staying in a trade or taking a trade although we're currently i mean i'm currently facing some problem on the other side of life besides trading so we're currently doing uh minus 2.36 percent and if we take a look at the account history we can see all the trades that was this week i mostly traded gold and us 30 i'm gonna be back with us 30 this new week and we had started the week with break even on USDJPY, then we had a loss on gold. We had this, I mean, those three losses on gold and even a fourth one. Those were all scalps that were trying to get something out of the market, but unfortunately we didn't. We had a little win on US30, but the market reversed on us. We had a loss here with US30 and we had a little win with gold and a little win with US30. And finally, a big $53.62 loss on US30. So as you can see, the week was choppy and unfortunately we ended up I'm losing more than we win this week. But in terms of risk management, we are still on board. As you can see, we are currently down 2.33% on the account and we've been in a losing streak and we have had 33 trades on the account 
The average winning trade is $30.20. The average losing trade is $35.60. We have to get that reverse. And the average risk reward ratio is 0.85. We have to increase that way more. The profit factor is 0.37. We definitely need to put it up to 1 point something, 1.5 probably. And the win rate, which is 30.30%, which is okay, as long as we can increase the average risk to reward ratio. So hopefully this new week, we can do better and we'll be in a much more better state of mind to trade the market and take money out of it. Thank you guys. It's been a pleasure. See you this coming week. Tired of missing trades or spending hours at the charts? Introducing my Robot Builders Club. With our platform, you can build bots in minutes, not weeks, without any coding required. Get lifetime access to my video course, VIP community, and over 40 ready-made robots. Works with MT4 or MT5, and as a bonus, you'll get three months access to my robot lab, where we build and test bots on live calls every week. Join the hundreds of traders who are trading smarter, not harder. Click the link in the description to learn more, get the free training, and download a free robot.